Good afternoon, everyone. Our project title is FM Coverage Area Measurement System, and I will start with introducing our group. Here we have Bao, Long, Emmy, and myself, Sarah. Starting with a brief introduction to our project, our project is a prototype of, an, uh, of a portable device that measures and records a uh, signal strength in order to determine the coverage area of uh, FM broadcast transmitter. To whom we are doing this project, uh, any FM broadcast station can take advantage of our project. However, the initial motivation uh, from where this, the idea of the project started is the nonprofit organizations in Guatemala who broadcast their public health messages via FM radio. The problem these nonprofit organizations uh, have is they need to estimate the population they are reaching. Since they, are broadcast, since they broadcast important news and uh, information, they want to make sure that everybody in these rural areas get these information. However, they get these news, they get a theoretical idea for the areas they are covering, but for more practical and accurate, we came up with our portable unit, which consists of uh, hardware and software at the same unit. This unit will uh, be able to scan the whole uh, standard FM radio channel and would enable the user to determine the range in case he want, he, uh, he's only interested in a specific range. So the requirements of our project, first, the device has to be uh, portable. Uh, second, uh, we had to power the uh, device from the cigarette lighter since it's a portable device and it needs to run for a long time. Uh, the device uh, has to be able to record the entire standard FM uh, band, which goes uh, down from 87.5 megahertz uh, to 107.9 uh, megahertz. It has to record the latitude and longitude for each location, since we are uh, driving for different locations. And the output, text fi the output file has to be uh, saved on a USB flash drive in order to use this uh, information for cost processing and creating coverage maps. The user is able to, uh, speci uh, to specify the range he's interested in, and like in case he's not interested in the whole band. And uh, the device has to be uh, user friendly, so the user, so anybody can use it, even if he's not engineer or technician. Now we will move to Bob, who's going to be talking about system components. Okay. So uh, pretty much the heart of our project is the FM receiver. This is actually very difficult to find. It's an integrated chip that actually is able to change frequencies, uh, record those frequencies, and actually calculate the RSSI. RSSI is a received signal strength indicator. Uh, this chip uses its own version of RSSI, however we convert it to DBM, which is the industry standard. We have a simple GPS, also USB, a generic FM band antenna with a magnetic mount that we, that we constructed. Uh, and we have uh, our computer. It's a BDX uh, single board computer. It runs Windows XP. It will be running the two devices. It will be running off the oops, be running off the uh, cigarette lighter adapter, which, off, uh, which is outputs 12 volt DC. So we had to design and create a 5 volt power regulator. And inside, uh, or we put it, the unit inside of our external enclosure, which is waterproof and magnetic mount. And here you can see what you can see. Mm -hmm. Alright, so here's pretty much how it works. Uh, the user will turn on the system. The system will automatically choose this program, which will be running the whole band. So first, the GPS will give this information to the Singapore computer. The antenna picks up the signal, which goes into the FM receiver, which calculates the RSSI, and it goes back to the computer. It'll do that for the whole scanning process from whatever uh, frequencies they choose. And then at the end, it's all composite text file and sent to the USB drive. All right. Here we have Long talk about the operating system program language. Um, so for the operating system we choose is Windows SP, and the program language we're using is C++ and Windows 7. Louder, please. Um, so Windows SP is the operating system we use. This one, this flowchart is for user required input. But if we compare those two flowcharts, the only thing different is um, this one. 
the user had to input a minimum frequency and a maximum, but this one, uh, the program will automatically set those two frequency. So I'm go ahead to talk more detail about this flowchart. Uh, as you can see, there are two uh, big functions in our flowchart, which is get GPS data and get FM receiver data. I will talk about that um, next. Um, next. So the program was um, the program was start, and the program will wait for the user to put um, to put a minimum frequency and a maximum frequency. Uh, when the program receives those two data, it will it will go to the the first function get GPS data, and it will save this GPS data to our data database, and went to another function called uh, get FM receiver data. After the next function, uh, all the data will also save in our database, and it will go to a checkpoint in the system end or not. If not, we we'll get another GPS data. If the system end, uh, the whole program will just end. And this is a uh, flowchart for our get GPS data function. So when the program get into this uh, function, first of all, it will open a combo and read a, read a line from GPS data string and compare if this GPS data string is uh, location data or not. If not, we will go back and get the uh, next GPS data. If yes, we will save this data and end up, um, end up function. And this is our FM receiver get get FM receiver data function. So again, the program will come um, to this function and first thing they do is um, save the minimum frequency to a temporary variable. And uh, we compare this temporary, uh, temporary variable to the maximum frequency. Uh, if the temporary variable less than the frequency, you will get the RSSI data and save both RSSI data and the temporary variable. Then we have to uh, increasing this temporary variable by 0.2 because um, that is a channel space between two. Um, if not, um, so after that we have to go back um, to the checkpoint until the temporary variable um, greater than the uh, maximum frequency, the uh, program will end the function. So this is another picture of um, what this program does. And this is sample output for our program. Uh, so as you can see, this is our GPS data. And follow up is our FM receiver data. And this is our SSI data. Another program we create for this project is um, format, format those data to a um, mapping need. So as you can see, we have raw data from our first program. We run the program. And we get another formatting test data. For the mapping, and as you can see, this is formatting test data. Have everything for the mapping, and this is a GUI for us uh, for the project. So user can simply um, type in the maximum frequency and minimum frequency, and simply hit enter. The program will run. Next, uh, I want to talk about the automatic um, copy system. Um, for for this system, we had to set up this USB by writing those two files into this, those two um, files into this USB. So from the time when you uh, finish getting data, all he does is put this USB into uh, the single board computer. And he will automatically copy the file from this single board computer to this USB. He also, have, he also will run a program and generate the mapping data file. And that is any what about. Yeah, I'm gonna discuss the post-processing part of our project, which is how which is how to um, visualize the collected data on the map. So um, the software used in this project are Google Earth, PowerPoint, and Excel. Actually, Google Earth is simply to view the map, and then this is free for every user, so that is quick and easy. But for the Earth point, actually, in order to overlay the let long value that you collected on while while you're driving. Actually, we need this Earthpoint facility to um, put it on the Google Earth. So we have to sign up this Earthpoint facility. But it is free for educational purpose or a non-profit organization, but it is not free for the commercial products. So you have to pay $50 per year for to sign up this Earthpoint. 
and I hope every engineer knows about the Excel, so I don't need to go further. And here's the post-processing data flow, and um, I'll explain it thoroughly in the following slide. Then here you see the raw data text file, and then in a way that we have to change it to the formatted text file, and the formatted text file, there is a, a record number, frequency, signal strength, but the, the main thing here we created for the formatted text file is icon, icon color. Actually, icon color we set up for the strongest signal gonna be the dark red, shown in dark red, and weakest signal shown in the dark green. So um, over here, there are um, all the, you can see that this is the strongest signal and this is a weakest signal, but you can see the gradients, those are all 5 dBm different. So here, um, after you creating the formatted file, you import the data into the our Dynamit Excel template. And this, um, actually, whenever you enter the new data, this uh, frequency versus signal strength distribution curve will change. So um, you may also wonder what's our file size. Even we drive up to three hours, the file size is not that big. And then um, you may also wonder how um, Google Earth, how long will it take to import it, the data in the Google Earth? So let's say when you up import 100 cycle, uh, it takes like only two minutes, a little bit over two minutes. So that's quick and easy. And then after that, um, after creating the Excel file, you imported that Excel file into the Earthpoint facility and you will see that you can view the map. And here is a folder that we created in a two way. First one is a, first one is a, a table map. Actually, this is the point that um, you are driving along the route. And then if you want to look at the frequency band, you can click on the specific location and then all the uh, frequency that you're measuring will drop down. And another way of viewing the data is you can pick up your specific frequency. For example, let's say my favorite frequency is 99.5. Then I pick up 99.5, and then I want to look at that particular location. You will see the signal strength at that particular location. So now I'm going to talk about testing. OK, so uh, we did several tests to make sure our unit was working correctly. First, data availability, making sure that our GPS and that our receiver are working correctly. Uh, autonomy, making sure that uh, the unit can function by itself without any user input. We <coughs> just tested to make sure the unit could actually survive testing. <coughs> All right, uh, one thing to keep note of, uh, the RF power density equation is as you see there. And what we could actually vary is uh, R squared, which is the distance from the transmitter. So first off, we have uh, our GPS. We use it against points in Google Earth, making sure that our points were close to where they should be. We found that indoors are our points were approximately about plus or minus 15 meters, not too good. However, outdoors were about uh, two meters, which is a lot more accurate. Our FM receiver, we found out that indoors it was about plus or minus four dBm, <coughs> which is fairly fairly accurate. However, it could be better. Outdoors not available because of a lack of a full spectrum analyzer. All right, for value stability, we drove back and forth here on Braddock Road between Chain Ridge and 7100. You can notice that our values do change here and there. It's only about, about two miles from here and there. However, we can see that the values do jump a lot. Uh, not too much, but it is still noticeable. Next one, we have endurance test. This is a much farther test. We have from here, it's about George Mason on 66 to about an hour's drive, so about 45 miles from there. We can see that it's much stronger signal strength on the right side, as you can see, and much weaker over here. And the station is located in Rockwell, Maryland, so we can tell that our unit is working correctly. The stationary test. Here we are at McDonald's over in the uh, University of Hall. Uh, we just did a stationary test to make sure the unit, when stationary, will not drop too much. And here we can see that it does not, so we know our unit is working just fine. Right. Uh, here we have a short video demoing what we do.
so for future improvements, what we'd like to do is uh, make it battery powered, because that way we don't have to feed any wires to the roof, and if the car does shut off, the, the, the unit is still running. Automated mapping, so that as soon as we get the text file, we one click and get everything we need. Uh, also, for commercial purposes, we can uh, up upgrade to the wideband receiver, so we can open it up to uh, VHF and UHF frequencies, expand to AM and TV frequencies. That way we can have more clients, or more possible buyers. And the total cost for the, this project is $442. And then we have, um, for the donation, we have an FM receiver and um, base magnets and nuts and gold. We got it for free. And for the man hours, actually, um, the total 379 hours we work and then $25 per hour and total up to 9475 So when you added up those two, the total cost for this project is $9,970.05. Talking about team's responsibility, we have split uh, responsibilities. Uh, so we have Bang Hee, who is the technical manager, who built the enclosure and the encoding. We have Long Hee, who is the coding manager. Amy, who is the financial manager, and shared the coverage house responsibility along with me, Sarah, and who I am the project manager. Lessons we have learned, don't assume. Take a light load of the process with senior design. It's a lot of work, so don't load yourself with other classes. Start early and take advantage of breaks. You can get a lot of work done during breaks, so make sure to take advantage of that. Order extra parts. You're gonna run into problems, bad parts, ruined parts. So make sure you have you have extra parts. Have a backup plan. If you don't have two backup plans, at least make sure you have one backup plan because you're gonna change your approach. Uh, trust nothing. Verify everything and always test test. test. We have special thanks for our advisor, Dr. Nelson, Dr. Vicky, and our co-advisor and technical advisor from home. Uh, we get a lot of knowledge and we get benefit from his experience, Professor Michael Young. Uh, we have special thanks for Bill Clark, who's the point specialist and who uh, helped us in getting access for the uh, <coughs> converting Excel to Canva uh, 5. We have special thanks for Navo Research Lab from home. Uh, we bought a lot of parts and um, tools. We have special part and thanks for uh, uh, RDI Microelectronics in China who donated two uh, FM receivers. And uh, sure for our friends and family at Weeb.